Hello, thank you all so much for being here. This semester, in honor of Mosaic having its first all-female staff, we are featuring women making an impact across campus, and I'm excited to talk about your experience as women in leadership roles at UA. Could we start with each of you introducing yourself, your major, and your publication? Um, I'm Takayla Bates. I'm a senior majoring in interdisciplinary studies, um, and I'm the current editor-in-chief at 1956 Magazine. I'm Ashley Woods. I am a senior majoring in news media with a minor in political science and concentration in sports media, and I am the editor-in-chief of the Crimson White. I'm Sassy Mednikow. I am a senior majoring in music and business with a minor in accounting, and I am editor-in-chief at Mosaic Magazine. Kyla, we're going to start with you. What first sparked your interest in working for a pub campus publication, and what was the first role you took within it? Um, I've just always loved writing. When I first started my freshman year, I came in as a journalism major, and um, I really, my career goal was to work for a magazine in New York, so I started off at Alice Magazine as a contributing writer. Um, I wrote my first ever like journalistic story there. It was a review on Little Women, the movie that came out in 2020. So yeah, that was the, the spark of my time here with like working in student media. All right, Sassy? What is your niche within your publication, for example, design, photography, or different styles of writing, and has that remained a focus in your position as editor-in-chief? So I started with Mosaic my freshman year because I was looking for an honors class to take, and I was placed on the digital media team. So I helped handle social media and publishing on the website and everything, and throughout my time in Mosaic, I have focused on that, but I have also branched out into a more editorial role, writing some stories as well. All right, Ashley, when was the moment you knew you wanted to pursue a leadership role within your publication and why? I don't think there was a particular moment for me where I realized that I wanted to be a leader in my publication, whether that was at the CW or at 1956. Um, I got promoted to assistant sports editor in January of 2021. It was kind of just like a spur of the moment. They saw that I had a lot of dedication and I took um, a lot of time perfecting my craft and my writing and stuff like that. So they decided that uh, the editor, editorial team decided that um, I was a good fit to join them in the spring semester and it kind of just spurred on from there. To Kyla. How do you see your influence on campus with students and administration? Um, I just think going to a PWI as a black person and 1956 being a black publication where we can reach really all of black UA and just writing stories and sharing stories about the black experience here amongst students and teachers. I think the influence has been good. We still are a fairly new magazine. We're three, four years in, so we're trying to continue to have that influence across campus. But it can be as anything as simple as like walking across campus and people recognizing me or somebody on the staff and saying, hey, I saw your publication, I really like it. Or just like people coming to the events that we throw or like our lunch parties and stuff, so yeah. Ashley, have you seen anything similar with the Crimson White? Um, yeah, especially this year, I've seen a lot of people come out, to, come to me and talk about the way that we are covering different events this year and how they've appreciated the fact that we're taking a more nuanced approach to covering diverse communities on campus. That was one of the, uh, the initiatives that I had when I first got hired as editor-in-chief. That was in my proposal, um, making sure that we entered in those spaces of underrepresented communities and media with tact and nuance. And one of those ways we've done that was the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts um, in-house so that when we go out, outside of um, the Office of Student Media, we are more, we have a heightened awareness of those issues that we are covering. Because um, I do, uh, my staff is still majority white, um, but there is still a need on campus to cover those issues that um, don't fall, that they don't necessarily identify with on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's necessary for us to cover that. So I think that is probably the biggest area of impact, just seeing how receptive those communities have been, because it's been pretty rocky for the past couple of years, those communities. Um, th there are some things that the CW has done that really should not have done, um, and I think we have made strides into making sure that we are not only doing fair and accurate journalism, but we are also ethically reporting on uh, human beings that exist on campus. 
so thank you. Sassy, we're going to start with you on this next question, but this is open to all of you. What is your favorite issue you have ever contributed to, and how has that experience influenced your work since? So I might be a little biased, but the issue we're working on right now has been my favorite. I have worked on two issues in the past for Mosaic, and this one I can just tell everyone has put so much passion into. We have a very small staff this year, but everyone has put their everything into this issue, and I'm really excited for it to come out. I've worked for both Alice and 1956, so anything I put out in 1956 I'm proud of because it's telling stories of marginalized groups of people. But I would say one of my favorite, I'll go to stories. Um, I co-wrote a story with a writer at Alice, and it was a story on protest music and how the engagement has been from the past to the present to the future. And we got nominated for a national award for it. Um, we were top ten, so I'm pretty proud of that story, so that's probably the one my favorite. That's awesome. Um, I'm trying to think of a particular issue I've done. I've been at this for four years. They all just bleed together. Um, I would probably say Amour Noir, which was the first issue of last year. That was my first time like ever like compiling a team together and cre not only having it created a design for something that I was doing, but for like multiple people. Um, and that was really tricky because I, I really never had to think about it that type of way. Uh, I was in editorial meetings, but it was mainly focused on the desk I was working for. So trying to compile all ideas into one goal um, was very tricky. Um, but I think the outcome and the issue that we got, it was nominated for, and it won a couple of awards actually too. Um, so I'm really proud of how well everybody came together to tell a story and give a positive image of black love and romance, something that is not really told well in media, whether that's print media, digital media, stories, movies, whatever. It's it's something that's not really well told. Um, it can be kind of it can be kind of traumatic um, watching some stuff that is centered around black love. So to create a celebration of it um, was truly important. Awesome. Uh, this goes for all of you. As Editors-in-Chief, do you find yourself taking on um, a completely different set of roles than you did when you were each contributors? Definitely. Um, I guess I'll be honest. Like, Editor-in-Chief is a hard job. Like, there are nights when I've cried, um, but it all came together. As a contributing writer, I just felt like it was more freeing and it was, like, all new to me. And But, like, Editor-in-Chief, it's it's cool to manage people, but it's also like really hard work. So, so as editor in chief, I have gotten so many opportunities that I haven't gotten working on Mosaic in the past. Just last week, I got to interview the Dean of the Honors College, which was a really great opportunity and really great to experience. But it is difficult. Like you said, I, there are nights where I do want to give up, but you know, you just got to keep chugging along and keep working at it. Um, it's, the editor-in-chief job is made to be hard because um, you are no longer responsible for yourself. As a contributor, you are responsible for just yourself, the work that you do, and the work that you commit to doing. When you take on even like a staff role, um, you become a part, you become even more a part of the team. So there are a lot more things that you have to think about than just what you're doing on your own time and what you're what you're trying to write and pursue. So naturally, being an editor-in-chief and running a publication, you're always thinking about everyone else. And it's really a selfless job um, because you do a lot of brunt work. There's a lot of burden on your shoulders. Um, and you don't necessarily get a lot of glory for it. I mean, there is payoff. And when the print edition comes out and a lot of people like it and people are sharing it on social media but there is a lot of things that i've done over the semester that i'm proud of that just simply got no recognition and that's just the price of fame honestly um but it's more so about creating relationships and creating bonds to make sure that people in the future have a better workplace to come into that is something that i've taken on with um uh, the CW, making sure that I create a place that where people can learn and grow and become innovative people so that whatever they do in the future, I have a lot of people that are not going to touch digital and print media once they graduate um, from the University of Alabama. And that's okay. I want this to be a learning lab to learn um, interdisciplinary skills that you can take to whatever workforce you land into. 
Uh, speaking of that, do you plan to pursue media after graduation? And if not, how has your time in media, student media prepared you for your future? Um, I do plan on pursuing a career in media, um, more so the sports media side of things I'm thinking about going into digital media. My time in print is done. I'm good. I, I'm, I'm ready to go to the digital side. Um, I think my time in student media has prepared me for the ups and downs of what it really means to be working in media, whether that's a journalist, a writer, a photographer, designer, whatever you're doing. Um, it's hard. Um, there are a lot of nights where you're going to cry, you're going to give up. You're just like, I don't want to do this no more. Um, it's more so about how you navigate those times. This semester has been particularly rough for me because I am doing something that no one else that looks like me has done before. So there's a separate set of challenges that come with that. And that's not my problem, but it's my it's my burden to bear because I took this job on. Um, and I think being in student media and having people um, in this framework that are supporting of me and supportive of what I'm trying to do has really helped. And I think student media has given me a lot of connections um, to people that I can use in the future to maybe like help better not only my career, but other people's careers. So I do not plan on pursuing media after graduation. This wasn't really something I was planning to do in college either, but it is something I have enjoyed and I am planning on going into business after this and the role of editor in chief being in charge of so many different things at once has really prepared me for the real world and managing so many different things in a business sense, just because you have to be on top of everything. And so my time in student media has really helped prepare me for the real world in that sense. I also don't plan on pursuing media after graduation. Being here, like for the past four years, I've continued to fall in love with writing. Like writing will always be something I'm passionate about. And like media isn't completely off the table. If I get offered to write for a magazine one day, I, I probably will take it. Um, but it's just not something I see myself continuing to do within my career. But I love storytelling and I love reading and writing about people's stories. Um, but like being here and in this leadership position it has taught me managerial skills as well and just it's taught me a lot about myself as well what my work ethic is how I'm able to lead people how I'm able to delegate and things like that so I think that's a good thing that I can leave here with and have learned from student media this final question is for each of you if you could give one piece of advice to young women in pursuit of leadership roles especially in media what would it be here, I'll start. You were placed in this role for a reason. You might feel like you aren't good enough. You might, I have really bad imposter syndrome and I definitely had a lot of doubts when I started this role, but you were placed in this role because people have faith in you and people know you can do it. And you just have to, you're, you're the only one who doesn't believe in yourself a lot of the time. I know this is very true for me. So you can do it even if you don't think you can. Know who you are before you step into this role. This role, whatever kind of role it is, whether it's an editor or an editor-in-chief or whatever type of leadership role that you have, you have to know who you are outside of that leadership role in order for, you, for it to be successful. Because imposter syndrome will kick in and you will feel like you're doing everything wrong. Um, so it's important to know who you are and it's important to have people who know who you are when you're outside of the uh, workplace. Um, that has really helped me um, ground myself, my mom, my parent, my dad, my brother, and my tight, tight, very tight circle of friends outside of here um, that know who I am and what I try to be outside of the Office of Student Media. They help ground me and keep me in perspective of what the true goal is, and that's to graduate um, come May. So know who you are, know the things that you like to do, what you don't like to do. Um, I truly understand what makes you tick before you take on a leadership role. Because if you don't understand your personality, your work style, your work ethic, before you step into a leadership role, it's going to be miserable. And it, you're not gonna have a lot of time to figure it out. Um, you will, you'll eventually learn and you'll kind of latch on, but it's really important to know the essence of who you are before you take on a role. 
Um, I think my advice was, well, is to being able to take up space, but also being able to give other people space. So um, in spaces, you shouldn't be afraid to just like sit back and let other people do it. Um, delegating is an important part about leadership roles, being able to manage people and tell them what to do, but also standing your ground in a sense. So that's the taking up space I'm talking about, of just like being in a space and being like, hey, I, I have this role for a reason, this is my role, so I'm going to delegate and I'm going to manage the space the best way I can. And also just giving other people platforms to like speak up and be collaborative, so yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for being here. I enjoyed hearing each of your perspectives and I can't wait to see what you do for the remainder of this year and in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.